to share with you how I do it. It's theological. If God had it in place at the beginning, at the present, and where? In the future. Meaning that the principle is what? Eternal. It never changes regardless of time. Thank you, Pong, and thank you, Joshi, and thank you, and Janice, and thank you, Praise Team, for just leading us in worship this morning. Really appreciate that. God is good all the time. I am blessed, so I live to bless others. I live to bless others because I am blessed. Do you feel blessed today? Amen. I do. I sure do. You know, this month of December, our theme is on wisdom. And last week, Pastor Sandra introduced the topic of wisdom and focused on the importance of spending unhurried time with God. And as we continue to seek wisdom, let us also pray that God will give us wisdom as we seek to determine how does his wisdom apply in our lives. Let us pray. Father God, today, there may be a few things that we will be discussing as a family, and I pray that through all of it, that you will be heard, that you will be seen, that you will be understood. So let this servant, Father God, just simply be behind the cross. And may you be lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm always a little nervous when my sister is here. And I'm always a little scattered. So if, you know, if, if I'm kind of like a little bit off, then just you know the reason why. But it's always a pleasure for me when I get my sister to visit me here. Today, um, we want to focus on a couple of passages found in the book of Proverbs that speaks about wisdom. The first one is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. It says, fools think their own way is what? Right. But the wise listen to others. This Proverbs reminds us that those who are wise go beyond their own thinking and understanding, and they realize that wisdom is often obtained outside of themselves. That wisdom is often obtained outside of who? Themselves. You know, Dr. Charles Black wrote this article in Better Humans just last, January, last, just last June, 21 to 23, and he says this, um, he says, in 50 years, oh, the, artic, the name of the article is Experience Alone Will Not Make You Wise. Experience Alone Will Not Make You Wise. And he says, in 50 years, some people will gain 50 years of what? Experience. While others will have the same one year of experience repeated 50 times. What is the difference between true wisdom and experience? He goes on and he says, to gain wisdom, you must be what? Changed by your experience. And to be changed means more than learning from your experience. The mistaken lesson many people take away from their experience is the reinforcement of what they think they already know. Those people aren't looking to learn. Rather, they are just trying to prove themselves right. 
So what he's trying to say is this, that oftentimes experience will not benefit us if all we're doing is reinforcing what we think is correct already. Instead of allowing experience to really look at why we do what we do and how it should affect the way we make choices. And he goes like this, true wisdom is not applying yesterday's false belief today. To become wise, we need not to what? Repeat. I got to hear that a little louder. To become wise, we need not to repeat the mistakes we made before. To accomplish that goal, we need to eliminate our inaccurate ideas. Otherwise, those false beliefs will take us down the same road to the same destination. It's kind of like that saying that goes, definition of insanity is what? Doing the same thing over again and expecting a different outcome. So according to Dr. Black, wisdom is learning from your experience and changing how you act or live. That's wisdom. So getting older, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be careful here, but I'm going to say it. So getting older doesn't necessarily make you wiser. If those learning experiences doesn't change who you are or how you behave. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says this. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. So God tells the people of Israel, never forget the things that I have taught you. Otherwise, what God is really saying is this, memorize God's teaching. There's a reason why God gave us commandments or guidelines. It's to prevent us from making the same mistakes over and over. So have you noticed this, that the first guideline that God had was this, have no other what? Gods before me. Have no other gods before me. Yet, even after God rescued and saved Israel, how often did the people of Israel covet other gods? We talked about that when we had the series on Nehemiah. But before we harp on the mistake of Israel for forgetting, is it possible? Is it possible? that we can make the same mistake? Is it possible that we fall into the same trap when our lives get so busy that we forget to have that unhurried time with God? Therefore, our busyness takes priority over our time with God. So I don't think it's a coincidence when God's first guideline is, thou shalt have no other God before me. You see, anything that takes priority before God, it's a problem. And you know, to this morning, I'm going to call myself out. If what I do for God and for this church comes before my time and relationship with him, I am not living a wise life. Because even as a pastor, I can become too busy for God. So God says, 
Do not forget my teachings. Memorize God's teaching. The second part of this passage says, store it in your hearts. It's not only remember these things I have taught you, but store it in your hearts. I would like to call it as we not only memorize God's teaching, we also inscribe it in your heart. So kids, if you're keeping track, what is M? Memorize what? God's teaching. What is I? Inscribe it in your heart. You see, what the mind knows, what the heart ignores is meaningless. So I'm going to say that again. What the mind knows, but the heart ignores is meaningless. For example, if you know that smoking will kill you, you know it up here. But if your heart says, but I like it anyway, it makes me feel good, so I'll ignore it. So Dr. Charles Black was right. It isn't wisdom if you don't learn how to apply it in your life. Poet Emily Dickinson says it this way, the heart wants what it wants. It doesn't matter what the mind knows, if the heart is not in sync, your life will be conflicted. So the book with wisdom says, you don't only memorize God's teaching, you have to inscribe it in your heart. In his article, he says five things that we can do to make sure that our heart matches with our minds. And so for me to go through all five will take us beyond my allotted time to speak. So I'm only going to pick up two things that he discovers that I thought was really interesting. Number one, he says, seek diverse perspective. Actively expose yourself to different viewpoints because you won't see anything new if you keep looking in the same places. As a church, we're an intergenerational church. And you know, one of the most beautiful things that we have in this church is when we sit in our pastoral staff meeting, it is beautiful. I mean, I'm just going to tell you, it is beautiful. We have Kuya Ernie. He's the most seasoned out of all of us because he, he's in his, he's in his later years. <laughs> he's in his 80s. Right? He, he acts like he's in his 60s. He works like he's in his 60s, but he's actually in his 80s. Right? We have Kuya Ernie who's in his 80s. Pastor Dan and I represent those who are between 60 to 79. Pastor Mark and Pastor Gisela represents those who are between ages 40 and 59. And Pastor Sandra represents the ages between 20 and 39. And here's what we begin to understand. Every perspective is valid and valued. Now, Kuya Ernie is Godfather, so he gets the ultimate say. But in truth, every perspective from young to young at heart matters. And so the second part of this is he says, engage in critical thinking. What kind of thinking? Critical thinking. Dr. Black says, question your beliefs and seek evidence to challenge them. Consider alternative explanations and weigh different perspectives before forming conclusions. So this morning, I'm a little nervous because I am going to challenge a belief that many of us hold on to, and I'm going to say this ahead of time. It's okay if you don't agree with my perspective. Okay? If I say something and you don't agree with it, it's what? It's okay. 
and I will still love you, and I hope you will still love me. So I'm going to say it. Can I, can I be vulnerable here and, and address it? Okay. I got permission from Ati Beth, so I'm going to do it. Someone said to me, Pastor, the Bible says that women should not wear men's clothing. Therefore, they should not wear pants on stage. So I want to challenge that. Did Jesus wear pants? Better yet, if you want to be consistent, if we believe that, that because the Bible said that women should not be in men's attire, then we also have to be consistent and say that every woman in this church should have a covering on their head. Because that's what Paul says. Paul says women should go to the head, go to the church in 1 Corinthians with their what? With their heads covered. Right, at the Beth? That's what he says. And the question is, why is it that we are good with one, but not good with the other? And I want to say to you that the answer is this. It's cultural versus what? Theological. Cultural versus theological. So I'm just going to share with you here, how do I personally determine what is cultural and what is theological in the Bible? How do I determine what is cultural and what is theological? I don't know how you do it, but let me share with you how I determine it for myself. And if you don't agree again, what did I say? It's okay. But let me share with you how I do it. It's theological if God had it in place at the beginning, at the present, and where? In the future. Meaning that the principle is what? Eternal. It never changes regardless of time. It doesn't change. For example, Sabbath. Was Sabbath there at the beginning of time? Yes. Is Sabbath present here now? Yes. Will Sabbath be there in the new heaven? Yes. Therefore, the principle of the, the theology of the Sabbath is eternal and not cultural like some of my fellow believers believe. Now, let me say this right up front. If God has convicted you to not wear pants in church, then be obedient to it. Be obedient. But don't enforce on others what God has convicted you personally. Don't enforce on others what God has convicted you personally. Rather, who should do the convicting? God and the what? Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, Iron sharpens iron. So it's okay if we have differing perspective. But let's be obedient to God while being loving and accepting to those who don't see it our way. One day, maybe God will convict me that I should be vegan. And when he does, I'll be obedient. But it doesn't mean that I will now dictate to this church what we can serve in potluck. Unless God convicts this entire church that that's what we should do. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. Never let, lo you still love me? Okay. <laughs> Insecure pastor here. <laughs> Proverbs 3, verse 3 and 4. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. It says, let loyalty and kindness be embedded deep in your heart. So wisdom says... 
Live love. I like that one. Wisdom says live love. You see, wisdom is not what you say. It's how you live. Wisdom is not what you say. It's how you live. And here it is. As Loma Linda Filipino Church, we are not judged by what we say. We are judged by what we do. What is our church mission statement? Love God, love others, and make disciples. What is our church vision statement? That's okay. I didn't know it either. So I'm going to show it to you. Our church vision statement is this. To be a manifestation of God's love physically, mentally, and spiritually through, one, service to our community in support of its families, Bible school, and lay training. Two, to support the needs of the homeless, the needy, and the sick. And three, to be a center for a healthy mind, body, and soul. So I'm going to take a quick poll here. Let's take a quick poll. Which of these three do you think we as Loma Linda Filipino are strongest at? How many here think it's number one? Raise your hand. That's a poll. None of you guys think it's number one that we're strongest at? Okay. How many here think it's number two? Raise your hand. See a couple of hands. So I'm going to assume that. How many here think it's number three? Raise your hand. Okay. The purpose of a poll is where you get to vote. That means you're not afraid to raise your hand. So let's try that again, okay? Which of these three do you think Loma Linda Filipino is strongest at? If you think it's number one, then you're going to raise your hand. If you think it's number two, you're going to raise your hand. If you think it's number three, you're gonna, it's, it, there's no right or wrong answer. It's a poll. So we can kind of see as a church what we think, right? Let's try that again. How many think that we are strongest at service to our community in support of families, Bible school, and lace training? Raise your hand. There you go. Thank you. Pretty good. How many think we are strongest at supporting the needs of the homeless, the needy, and the sick? Raise your hand. There's a few of them here. How many think we are strongest at being a center for healthy mind, body, and soul? Raise your hand. Oh, that's about 50-50 between number one and number three. Now, going the other way, which of these do you think the church has mostly ignored over the years? Which of these do you think the church has mostly ignored over the years? How many here say it's number one? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. A few of you. Service to our community in support of family. How many here think it's number two? Raise your hand. Oh, quite a bit more. Okay. How many think it's number three? Raise your hand. There's a few. So there's a slight between one and two, but number two was definitely the most. Regardless of how we feel, here it is. Our church has chosen to do how many? All three. We've been called to do all three. And this vision statement was created before any of your four pastors were here. Before I got here, before Pastor Mark got here, before Pastor Sandra got here, and before Pastor Gisela got here. This was in place. Typically... We won't argue about number one and number three. But when it comes to number two, and that is dealing with the homeless, there's a lot of different opinions. Many churches say when it comes to homeless, it's easier for us to prepare sack lunches, and it's not a bad thing, Go to where the homeless are, 
give it to them, and then go back to our church. And honestly, that's, that's pretty clean, isn't it? We did something good. We've done something nice. But the two never what? Come together. But what happens when we have the opportunity to work with them personally right on our campus? And I get it. I understand. Here's the reality. When it comes to preaching, what these people see is not what they hear. It's how we act. As a church, I'm going to ask us to, to pray for our pastoral team. Pray especially for Pastor Sandra as she is the one that really takes the lead on this issue. You see, this is the vision that this church has created. Let me say that again. This is the vision that who created? That this church has created. And hear me out. Your pastoral team has been intentional in addressing it. But no matter what we do, we are not all going to agree on how it gets done. That's just, that's just the, the reality. I tell you, it has not been easy. In fact, it's very complex. We just had the fire department come here last week. Thursday? Thursday. It's complex. It's, it gets really messy. And all day I struggled. I struggled. God, what have you called us to do as a church? I didn't create this vision statement. This church did. And now we as the pastoral team are addressing it. And we're finding, man, as we speak, there are unhoused people taking showers in our shower places. There are unhoused people having Bible studies in our premises. There are unhoused people who join you guys during fellowship lunch. It's not easy. But I'm so thankful that God didn't quit on this messy world and said, I give up. I don't know what to do. So here's my big ask. While the pastoral team works on this issue of dealing with the unhoused, we ask that as a church, will you give us latitude? Will you give us affirming support? Will we at least try to maybe set aside some of the fears that we have? And know that we are very intentional in how we're addressing it. Because if that's not what we want to do as a church, can I just be honest? If that's not what we want to do as a church, then Kriarni, let's change our mission statement. Let's change our mission statement. Make my job easier. But you haven't called me here to address the easy. You have called us here to address the tough issues that our church is facing. Bringing back our young people, 
keeping them in our church, dealing with those who are hurting and needy. And I'm going off script and I got to stop. But help us. Don't criticize us. Pray for us. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. See, wisdom says, memorize God's teaching. Mem wisdom says, inscribe it in your heart. Wisdom says, live love. And you know what else wisdom says? Keep trusting. Kids, I've got a, I want to illustrate this keep trusting. You know, I was looking at this thing and I saw something really cool. And I saw this razor, wireless razor this wireless RC car. And, and what's so cool about it is it is actually, um, okay, let me see if I can, oh, wrong, wrong one. It is, it is controlled, I know it better work, right? Yeah. Me and my little gadgets here. <laughs> Jet, are you ready in case this doesn't work? <laughs> okay. Come back. <laughs> Come back. Okay. I was practicing this last night. <laughs> Okay, let's see which way it goes. Oh, it's backwards. Ah. So one thing neat about this car is it's got wheels. And so in theory, when I move my hand forward, not sideways, when I have my move forward, it goes forward. If I move my hand back, it goes back. And if I turn sideways, it literally drives sideways, stop, and it goes this way. Go forward. Come on. No, don't. Yeah. Go sideways. Oh, you're stuck. Go backwards. You're stuck. Last time. Forward. Go backward. Okay, that's it. <laughs> We're good. Stop! <laughs> okay, we're going to end this. At least it's semi-worked. Now, why, other than it's fun, why did I use the RC toy? Because I realized that this car... It's us. And this car can go forward. And there's, if it's a wise car, it will be controlled by someone's hand. You see, wisdom says that the source comes from where? Someplace else. You see, when this car runs into the wall, it doesn't, it doesn't worry because it knows somebody else is in control. When this car gets lost, it isn't worried because it knows someone else is in control. When it runs into an area where it can't drive over, it doesn't worry. Because it knows that someone else is in control. You know what this car only keeps on doing? It keeps on 
trust him. And I've got to say today, wisdom tells us that we need to keep trusting. Are you, are you going through a crisis in your life right now? Don't give up. Keep trusting. As the doctor said, there's nothing else that we can do for you. Don't lose hope. Keep trusting. Did your child say, Mom, Dad, I no longer believe in God. Don't despair. Keep trusting. You look at your finances and you realize, I don't have enough to be faithful to God. Don't panic. Simply keep trusting. As the Bible says, trust in the Lord with how much? With all your heart and be not in your own understanding. You see, wisdom isn't wisdom unless we allow it to change our life. Wisdom isn't wisdom unless we allow it to impact us into the way that we live. And wisdom says, and there's nowhere else to turn to. When you've reached the end of your rope, when you think that there's nothing else left that you can do, today, I want to tell you, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't let go. But simply, Keep trusting. Shall we pray? Father God, today, I know I've, I've dealt with a couple of things that maybe we not, will not all agree with. But this is one thing that we can all agree. That regardless of what we're facing, we can keep trusting and I thank you. God, there are many people in this church right now, and we are all going through so many different things. Man, I, I think of Ati Lloyd of who's in the hospital. I think of people who have just lost their loved ones like the Mahinai family. I think of those who have just declared that they found out that they have cancer. I think of those who may have lost their job. And God, today... We want to know that this church makes a difference. We want to know that you make a difference in our life. And so, may we leave this place with the assurance that everything is going to turn out for the best when we keep trusting. And so, God, when our when we're in doubt, when we don't know what to do. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for just loving us and hugging us and letting us know it's all right, child. I am there with you. Even when you can't trust, I will be faithful. In the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.